All right, everybody, welcome back to the How I Sell podcast. We have a great guest with us today. It's Mr. Mustafa Kudab, and he comes from Arcos Labs. He's the director of sales over there. I was getting to know him a little bit, and we have some common pathways in our past, obviously, moving from Minnesota. He spent some time in Minnesota as well, so we're very excited to jump in with him today. Mustafa, tell us about yourself. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for asking, Danny. Thrilled to be here. Thrilled to speak to a, well, a fellow Midwesterner at, at the very least, and uh, definitely have strong ties to Minnesota. Love the state. Uh, so I am uh, Director of Sales at, at Arcos Labs, as, as you mentioned. I lead a team of enterprise account executives as well as, well as BDRs. We help uh, our customers really provide a a solution to um, the fraud and abuse that a lot of customers of theirs experience when it comes to their accounts. And I, I've really enjoyed the, the six months that I've spent with the, the organization thus far. And thrilled to be here today, Danny. Awesome, yeah, we are very pumped to have you. Obviously, you have an illustrious career in sales and our audience is genuinely gonna learn from you. So let's jump in as a reminder for our audience on the How I Sell Season 2 podcast, we are asking all of our guests the same five questions to get an apples-to-apples apples comparison of how they thought about their early career and what they're learning still to this day and how it can apply to all of you. So let's jump in. Question number one, what is the best investment an early career salesperson can do for themselves and why? I mean, this is... I have a great answer, but it's not something that's practical for everyone. Try to find an organization that will provide a professional coach. If you're able to do that, it will reap benefits for the rest of your career. If you're not able to do that, if there's any way you can swing getting one yourself, I highly recommend it. You're going to accelerate your, your career, your understanding of sales. I mean, sales is, is really about a lot of evaluation, iteration on the process. A coach will help you do that. You look at the Olympics, none of these athletes out there are working without a coach. Uh, think of the difference it would be if they tried to do it all on their own. The same applies to sales. And that is, that is definitely the, the biggest piece of advice I could give to anyone starting out their career. Awesome advice. That and makes total maintaining their career. <laughs> <laughs> Makes, makes total sense, makes total sense. For those folks that maybe don't necessarily have access to a coach, how would you go about finding it? Where do they even start looking for that? Well, that's where uh, Google definitely comes in handy, but I would leverage those LinkedIn connections and really ask people in the profession, who do they rely on? Who do they talk to? Who has influenced their career? And who's give them the best advice when it comes to selling? Yeah, that's great. That's really great advice. We've heard folks say find a mentor. We've heard folks, you know, say create an executive board, a personal executive board. But finding a coach early in career is is certainly something that all folks can benefit with. And you know, you can think about it almost like a preview of the sales role. If you email on LinkedIn and reach out to enough people, someone's going to say yes. Yeah, someone's going to want to be your coach. Absolutely, you're exercising their skill, those skills right there. For sure. Cool. Well, question number two. Uh, what's the biggest surprise you experienced early in your career? So I actually got into sales relatively late in my career. I've always focused on business, but I also spent some time uh, studying law. So I didn't get into sales with the intent of necessarily practicing for a long time. I, get, I got into sales for the education to really round out what I felt was my, my business education experience at the time. So my stereotype of sales was one that so many people have, and that is it's a practice of manipulation. It's trying to get people to do something that they may not necessarily even want to do. And so I, I dreaded it. I felt it was necessary to better understand what made sales tick. Uh, once I got in the profession, I realized it's, it's the furthest thing from the truth. You have, uh, a duty and obligation. In fact, if you're going to be good at selling, you need to be much more like a psychologist when it comes to working with your prospective customers, the folks across the table from you. You need to help them 
ask the questions that are important because at the end of the day, it's about them and it's not about you. It's about helping them understand what is the problem they're trying to solve? How, how important is it to them? And does the solution you offer make sense for what they're trying to accomplish? And if so, how are they going to go about uh, selecting that solution, making sure that, that it's procured in, in a way that makes sense? And these are the same questions you're going to ask throughout the process. It's not about telling. It's not about twisting arms. It's about helping people articulate things that sometimes aren't that clear to themselves to start out with. And that's really at the heart of the profession. Yeah, that's that's so true. It's so true. Sales gets this knock and it's because your whole life you're probably conditioned to it without you even knowing through movies and through the media of like the salesperson is just this smooth talking, potentially used car salesman, most likely male figure that's just like domineering a room and uh, getting everybody to like fall in love with their persona. And that's just not how it is, especially not anymore. Like that just doesn't exist. That's not how uh, software is sold. That's not how tech is sold. You really have to be extremely high EQ. You have to understand pains and desires and why they would even want to talk to you. There's just so much more to the role than just like that, the smooth talking boiler room type. And I was going to go with uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Of course. Uh, Coffee is for closers, but you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that stereotype is very hard to break. So when yep. I actually started out, I, I was actually working with a coach out of, the, out of the gates, which was extraordinarily helpful. And, you know, he made all this very clear to me, but it's interesting just how instinctive it is for probably based on the, the culture in which we're raised and the, the images that we see on the screen, whether it's Boiler Room or uh, Alec Baldwin um, pointing at his watch, we, we get to this idea of what it's supposed to look like. And that's something that it's, it's hard, it's instinctive, and you need to work at it to really get yourself out of that mode and make it about the person that you're talking to and not about yourself. Totally, totally. And this may take another generation of sales people to break the mold. And now we're starting to see across the industry, higher percentage of women taking sales roles and uh, moving into leadership positions, which is a, such a net positive for uh, for the world, not just you know our, our industry. But I think it's gonna take like, one or two more cycles to really break that mold. And I hope it breaks faster because that, that stereotype needs to just go away because there's so many smart, intelligent, thoughtful people in sales that come from all walks of life today. Completely agree. Awesome. And uh, separately, you know, your background actually looks a lot like my co-founder, Manoj. Manoj graduated as, you know, graduated from school, got his JD and then studied accounting Got a CPA actually. It's near perfect uh, with you, <laughs> your your JD and your your taxation degree. We'll have to have a conversation over lunch sometime then. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, cool. So, question three: What is one mistake you made early in your career that shaped the way you operate today? So, I think it's something that we all do in life, and it's particularly impactful in sales, and that's making assumptions. Uh, so often we as human beings, we fill in the gaps and it's easy. It makes life go a little faster. It makes communication more efficient. But when you do that in the sales cycle, you leave things unanswered. You leave potentially extraordinarily important details off to the side that could completely change the sales cycle. So I can't tell you how many times I did that early in my career but it was way too often and the impact probably is even more profound than i realize but unless somebody is telling you something and if they are telling you it make sure that the next time you talk to them confirm and reconfirm but unless they're telling you something specifically you don't know the answer to something it may be what you expect it to be, that they intend to sign within 30 days because that made sense. And based on the timeline that you had laid out, 30 days, we're gonna, we're gonna have a signed contract in 30 days. Well, unless they've explicitly said that and they've talked about what that's gonna take, one, they may not have the answer. They may not know what the process is gonna look like. 
there's so many questions in there that need to be answered for everyone to have clarity, whether it's the potential customer, yourself, what needs to happen, what, what roadblocks stand in front of you, what hurdles you have to get over. And the danger in assuming is sales is, is a business that's built on forecasting and understanding expectations around revenue and revenue generation and, and timing around that. So many things can completely derail a sales process, both for the buyer as well as the seller. So you've got to ask those questions and maybe it's, maybe the answer is exactly what you expect. Maybe it's, it's going to be a little more involved than you expected. Maybe it's what you don't want to hear, but it's better to get it out there because eventually it's going to be impactful. Eventually it's going to uh, make itself known. Yeah, that's right. It's the old uh, two brains from Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. We fill in those gaps and, you know, therefore, you know, it's kind of the lazy brain working best and just making sure that we've kind of glossed over the details and the details are really what sales is all about. You have to ask questions. You have to probe your prospect to make sure that they're giving you the information. You're just not seeing a profile and assuming that every profile is the exact same. And, and so importantly, many people, they may be buying a, a particular piece of software or solution for the first time they may be familiar with the buying process, they may not be, and there's always changes in organizations. So helping someone really explore that and ask those questions often raises things and considerations that, that they never had themselves right. and allows them to say, all right, you know what? I really do need to bring X, Y, and Z into this process because without her support, we're not gonna get this project off the ground. Mm -hmm. And without really thinking it through, they may be making assumptions. They may be filling in the gaps themselves. Yeah, so it's that's critical right. that, that we as professionals ask those questions. Yep, that's, that's totally right. When do you think you made that realization and how did you make the switch? What was the change? It's, it's just an iterative process. It takes time. And unfortunately, as much as you can be told something, it really takes falling on your face. So it takes missing expectations when it comes to, to forecasting. It takes having certain assumptions that, that you may not even recognize yourself completely shattered. Oh, you know what? There's a, there's a completely unrelated team that actually is critical to this entire process that hasn't been involved. And I never thought to ask. It takes experiences like that to really uh, bring it home, unfortunately. But as long as you're aware of that to start out with, you'll be in a better place than you would be otherwise. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great realization that you've shared with our audience. And often, you know, people don't even know they're doing it. So something to pay attention to as you're moving up the ranks and as you're just or, or you're just kicking off your sales career is is how to proactively determine if you're making assumptions and how to get out of that cycle that's just repetitive. So moving on to question number four, who has had the greatest impact on your career and how have they impacted you? So I'm not gonna name names because there's too many people who have had <laughs> such a positive influence on my career. And I've had so many great leaders I've been able to model myself off in different ways. and. And so many peers and, and other colleagues who I've just been able to observe and recognize as just doing the right stuff and then making that part of who I am. And I think that's the important thing is look for inspiration everywhere. But I'm going to have to go back to my, my first coach with whom I, I still work. And uh, again, this isn't um, to sell anyone's services. It's simply find someone that you can work with who can help you better yourself. And a coach, a coach isn't going to give you all the answers. A coach is going to let you find those answers and become a better professional. So for me, the the coach with whom I work, the coach with whom I, and there there are other uh, influencers in that as well who have provided really good insight, profound insight into how sales operates at a human level that I think just really have shaped how I've become as a as professional and I encourage people to really take advantage of that, whether it's through the, the connections on LinkedIn, whether it's reading different books on the profession and then doing some outreach on their own, 
whatever the case might be, look for that type of guidance and then consistently evaluate yourself and have someone who can do that with you. Because yeah. um, while we can be our own worst critics, sometimes we need more than that to really see what we're doing well and uh, continue working on that and honing it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And again, the mention of the coach, it's making me want to go out and uh, and find someone to work with. And I, I kind of have an offshoot of this for a question, you know, how, how can you tell if the coach is having the right impact on you versus somebody you're just using to say, hey, I've, I've got a coach now? Well, I, this is the tough one, but sales is about results at the end of the day. We're all judged on them. So if you're not getting those, if you don't see a path to achieving them, the techniques you're leveraging, the way that you're thinking about it, the way that you're processing sales. For me, it really was about, does this resonate at a profound level internally? And it did, and that allowed me to be myself as a professional, which is critically important and become comfortable with who I was as a, as a sales professional. If someone's able to help you do that and achieve the goals at the end of the day, then I think that's a pretty good indicator that you're working with one of the right people. That's awesome. What a, what a great way to evaluate if you're having the impact is just straight up, you know, results, proof is in the pudding. All right, last question for you, and it's something we ask all our guests. Obviously, we've been asking the same question both across your season one and season two, but if you could go back in time, now that you have the benefit of hindsight, what advice would you give yourself coming out of school? So coming out of Carleton or even, you know, coming out of NYU, whichever one you want to choose. Well, either way, I think it's the same. And that is get rid of the fear. And that's easier said than done. But the question at the end of the day is, what are we here to do? And so often we wrap it around ourselves and our goals, our objectives, and we get lost in what really matters. And that's the person across the table, the people you're interfacing with. If you remove yourself from the equation, you also remove a lot of that fear, a lot of that distraction, a lot of that noise that really keeps us from performing at a high level and really helping those in the manner that we need to help. Um, it, again, that, that's something that I would say, along with some of the lessons I shared earlier, it took a little while, it takes a little while. Part of it is, is confidence that you have to build that this is who you are and this is the right approach. I'm going to go back to plugging a coach. A coach can help you with that. Yep. A coach can help you see that. But we tend to just internalize so much and just say, all right, and we and we distract ourselves in these conversations. Are, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to offend somebody? Well, if you're thinking about what's best for them, if you're thinking about the questions that they should be asking themselves, that noise, that goes away. And it just takes a lot of practice, a lot of work. So the sooner you know, one can, one can get to that point, the more successful you're gonna be. And I would just tell myself that right out of the gates. Listen, pull yourself out of it. Stop, stop getting in your own head and, and think about what would, what would, how would you wanna be approached by someone else? What questions would be important to you if you were on the other side of the table? It's really, really good advice, really simple and so difficult to execute to you in your early part of your career. It's such a learned thing that, you know, I'm, I'm sure we all struggle with still to this day, but it's so good. It's such it's 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 so clear. And, and like you said, it's it's easier said than done. Awesome. Well, Mustafa, tell us where folks can find you. And is there anything that you're working on today that you want to share with our audience? I just have to tell everyone out there that Arcos Lab is an extraordinarily exciting company. If you're not familiar with us, we work with companies like Microsoft, PayPal, Sony. We help them uh, really alleviate some of the challenges they're seeing around fraud and abuse with customer accounts, and we're making a very meaningful impact. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to me. It's m.kutub, and that's Q-U-T-U-B at arcoslabs.com or uh, ping me on LinkedIn and I'll look forward to talking to you. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the How I Sell podcast, Mustafa. 
Thanks so much for sharing and dropping all of your knowledge on us. So much of it is just so straightforward and simple, yet so, so difficult for people to learn over time. So you have sped up a lot of learning curves out there and, uh, and I'm excited, excited for our folks to listen in and gain that knowledge from you. Thank you so much, Danny. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Take care. Yeah.